Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty A YouTube channel and it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll stick around, find out who inspired me today, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, I'll tell you a little bit about it before we get started. I like to stop by almost every Saturday and team up with another crafty YouTuber for a fun little collaboration. Each of us will be creating a new project and video that is based in some way on a project that the other creator has made. If after watching today's video you're a crafty YouTuber who is interested in joining me, I do have a link in the description box below to the video with all of the details and the application. Right now, I'm looking for partnerships starting in late April through the end of the second quarter. My partner today is going to be very familiar to you. I was on her design team at the end of last year for her online crafty store. She is part of my sheet load of cards collaboration team, and both of us recently just joined the not too shabby design team. Do you know who it is? It is Teresa from Fresh and Renewed with Teresa. Make sure that you're, if you're not already subscribed to her here on YouTube or following her on Instagram that you do that. Her social media links are in that description box below. For today's card, I'm going to be taking inspiration from the project you see on screen. I will have the Instagram post and the YouTube video linked below so you can go check these out. Now after I create my project today, make sure you go watch Teresa's video and find out how I inspired her. That link is at the very top of that description box below. What I'm going to be taking as inspiration from Teresa's card is the layout and then I love that little grassy area with the sky. Now I'm going to tell you about my main products I'm going to use today. If I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Now one cool thing about today's products that I'm going to use, two of them were actually designed by Teresa for Not Too Shabby. I know that I did recently share another card I created with these. I will have that video linked below if you want to check it out. For my pattern papers, I'm going to be using the Dots for Spring paper pad. It is 6x6, six six, lovely pastels for spring, and each side has a different size polka dot on it. For my stamp set, I'm going to be using the basket and the Easter eggs from the Easter Wishes stamp set. And today I'm going to show you how I can add color to images without actually coloring. Now if you're interested in either of these two products, I do have a 10% off coupon code in the description box below as well as an affiliate link to Not Too Shabby. I would love it if you would use those, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and actually you'll save with that discount code. I will be stamping today with Memento Tuxedo Black. And for my grassy area, I cannot believe it, but I do not have a grass border punch or a grass border die. So I really had to dig into my stash. I was actually on my hands and knees underneath a table getting into boxes to find this pair of Provo Craft scissors that has a grassy texture on the top. Now, if you don't have either of the items I've already mentioned, I also was going to try to use some shredding scissors or you could always just hand cut something or just leave it a nice rolling grassy hill. You definitely don't need any special supplies to make the green area look like grass. Just use what you have. I got out a scrap of craft cardstock. I'll be using this for the basket today. 
And then I did already go ahead and select the pattern papers I'm going to use today. I chose to use the littlest dots in the pack and I got out blue, green, and pink. I'm going to be using the green for the grass, the blue for the sky, and the pink for the background. I like how I can color the sky and grass area, but I don't have to use any special tools to color with. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the cutting first. The pink piece got cut to four by five and a quarter, and I will make sure that I keep all of the scraps today for paper piecing later on. The blue piece got cut to three and a quarter by four and a half, and this leaves a nice border around it so you can see some of that pink. And finally, I cut the green piece to three and a quarter inches wide by two inches tall, and I may need to cut this down more later. Next up is the stamping, and I'm going to be paper piecing all of my stamped images. I want the Easter eggs one to be in each of the colors that I've used for the card base, so I just set those all up in my Misty, placed an Easter egg on each color, and then stamped with Memento ink. Now I did bring in my Misty for this in case I needed to stamp twice, but these stamped beautifully the first time. Next, I got out the Easter basket from the set. Now when it's upside down, I think you could actually use it as an acorn, but I set this up on my scrap of craft cardstock and got that stamped as well. The final stamping that I need to do for this card is the Easter Wishes sentiment on that blue background piece. Now I do want to make sure I have the placement right, so I made sure to clean my Easter basket very well, and I brought that in to just help me decide where on the blue I could stamp my Easter Wishes. Once I had that set up, I just removed that basket before inking up Easter Wishes and stamping that onto the background. Next up is cutting. I brought in my grass scissors as well as my fine tipped cutter peed scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a little bit off the top of the green piece with my scissors. Now because of the way these scissors work you can't cut all the way in or you might get a flat spot. Now you will notice here that mine kind of slopes down but that's going to be okay because later my Easter basket will sit there and kind of help hide that. Once that was cut, I then proceeded to cut my Easter eggs and the basket. Now for the eggs, I did leave a slight border around the stamped line because I knew for the basket handle I was going to have to do that as well. I continued with the eggs, just making sure to turn the paper and not the scissors. And then for the basket, I did want to go ahead and show you how I did the inside. I very carefully poked a hole in there and then I cut from the center out to the edge and I stopped about where I thought my border would be when I trimmed the handle out. I did do this quite a few times because the more cuts into the outside, the easier it will be to cut off the excess. Once all of those inner cuts were made, I carefully cut around the inner edge, I guess you would call it, and then I did go in later and I cleaned up where I had left a little bit too much space. Before, I had to go the wrong way where I couldn't see what was to the right of my scissors, but now I have a little bit more control. And here's a look at that finished cutout piece. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it was time to put the card together. Luckily, the green piece ended up being a good height for the card after I cut off the top, so I placed that onto the bottom of the blue cardstock. Once the grass was in place, I played a little bit with the layout of the basket and the eggs, and then once I thought I had good placement for that basket, I added adhesive to the back of it. For the bottom larger part of the basket, I just used my ATG, and for the handle, I got out my art glitter glue and put a line around the handle. Now you'll see here that I also did add some where I had placed the ATG. That's just so I have some wiggle room on the ATG before I lay it down and let it sit aside to dry. Once the Easter basket had had time to dry, it was time to get the eggs put on the card front. 
the blue and the green get tucked into the Easter basket and I just used ATG to adhere those down. And then for the pink one, I wanted to add a little bit more depth and interest, so I brought in some mini dimensionals, placed three of those on the back, and popped that up to the right of the Easter basket. Off camera, I had laid all of the pieces of the card together to see what the final card might look like, and I wasn't too impressed. I thought this card still needed a little something, so I decided to look back at the inspiration piece, and I saw that Teresa had used a stitched rectangle die on her background sky piece, and I thought that might be what this card needed. I don't have a lot of stitch dies, but I definitely hit the jackpot with this My Favorite Things set that I had bought. The largest die has a line where it cuts that is exactly the same size as my blue piece. So I am going to try to run this back through my cuddle bug and see if I can get those stitched lines added. Let's all cross our fingers. Before I do that though, I did need to remove the egg, and because this paper is a little bit coated, it removed rather nicely. To make sure my die stays exactly where I need it to when I run it through the cuddle bug, I did bring in my scotch blue removable tape. This is going to allow me to tape the die in place, run it through my cuddle bug, and then the tape will pull off without damaging any of the pattern paper. After removing that piece from the die, I knew that those stitch lines were exactly what this piece needed. It adds the look of a mat without having to cover up any of that background pattern paper. Now we can get this card put together. Off camera, I replaced the pink egg on the card front with some new mini dimensionals, and then I placed my pink polka dotted piece onto the center of the card base. To add my decorated piece, I did bring in my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarter inch width, and I placed some of that on the back. This adds some extra dimension, and it helps separate my decorated piece from the background. Finally, I needed to add a little bling, so I brought in some sequins that I got shipped with my not too shabby goodies, and I am going to be using the clear sequins on this card. It adds just a little bit of shine, but doesn't take away from the rest of the card. I started off by placing three glue dots where I wanted each of the sequins to go. The first one I placed was to the right of the pink Easter egg because I did end up with a little bit more blue over there than I had on the left. The second one I placed to the top left of the basket and the third one down in the grass area. Once I pulled the release paper on those, I used my jewel picker to place these clear sequins. At this point I thought maybe I needed a few more. So since I want to try to keep things in odd numbers, I will add two more for a total of five. These two got tucked in behind the decorated piece onto the pink paper. I just thought that this was just a little bit of extra fun on this card. And here's a look at the finished piece. Eek, hold up, stop the presses. I got all the way through my voiceover and realized that I did not leave any space for the QOTV or the question of the video. And you know that I love to ask those in my videos lately. Since today's video is all about being inspired by others, I would like to know where do you find inspiration for your cards or projects? Let me know in the description box below and make sure if you're going to answer the QOTV to leave the hashtag, hashtag QOTV somewhere in your answer so I know that you've answered it and want me to read it. I have quite a few places that I go for inspiration. YouTube, some blogs, but mostly I get inspiration from my Instagram feed. I follow quite a few paper crafters over there and I am always saving projects to look at later and take inspiration from. And here is that look at the finished project that I promised you. I have to say one of my favorite things about this card is the fact that it is so colorful but I did not pick up a single pencil, marker, brush, 
anything to color it in. That is one great thing about paper piecing. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go see what Teresa has created. Once again, her video is linked at the very top of that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.